Good evening, folks. Turns out I'm taller than Archie Griffin. Who would have known? Thank you, Archie. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, and, and, and I'm happy to see we're honoring proper football etiquette, giving the microphone to the quarterback. Like anybody here needs to hear a quarterback talk any more than you already do. Uh, a sincere thank you to the NFF, Archie, Archie, Steve, everybody. This is amazing. And the committee for recognizing all of us, players and coaches on this stage. Uh, big congratulations to all the other awards winners, especially the Bill Campbell Award. I love Bill. I got to know Bill. Uh, my wife and I and our daughters now live a few blocks down from his home. And my life is certainly richer from having known him. Uh, and I think he'd be incredibly proud of all of you nominees, and especially, especially the winner, Jack Campbell. Not bad for a small town kid from Iowa, dude. Congratulations. <laughs> all right, all you East Coasters that are here, I'm glad to see you're still awake. This is great. Don't fall asleep on us. It's not yet 10 p.m. Or we will finally have proof that the East Coast bias is real. You folks know what I'm talking about. And as a two-time runner-up to the Heisman, I would love some confirmation on that at some point. All right. So, let, But let's keep this energy up. And I would love to hear it again for all the gentlemen on this stage. It's, it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure uh, to be with you guys so far. And, and before, I, before I continue, I do want to acknowledge that I, I feel an, an immense responsibility. Um, and it is a bit over... Overwhelming being up here talking uh, for you guys. I am the young pup of this group, and I really realized it when, shoot, Chuck's highlights were in black and white. It was eight millimeter. <laughs> and frankly, I, I do, not sp do not feel qualified to speak on behalf of these men who all have their own unique stories and journeys, their ups and downs, their own family, their own friends, their own teammates, their own coaches that supported them to this point, so I, I stand up here very humbled and, I, and, and full of respect for you gentlemen um, and, and what you do. And for me to try to encapsulate that would be a fool's errand. So congratulations again. I'd, but, but I do hope that I can, can honor you for a few minutes. And first again, congratulations, beyond special. Uh, and some of you don't know this, but there, there are a few of you that have had an impact on me in my career, and I'll share that real quick. I was a football-obsessed boy that grew up in Europe. I was a bit of an oddball, and we could only watch college football games on the Armed Forces Network, on the AFN. So my, on Saturdays, my parents would schlep us over to the other Americans that like, lived in Germany, and we'd turn on AFN at the Jeffries house. And for some reason, Penn State was always the team that was on. The Big Ten, yeah. And it was, because of the, it was because of one of those weekends in 1998 that for the rest of my football career, I lived in a constant state of terror and anxiety that someone was going to time my snap count up, jump over the center or the guard, and destroy me. So thank you, LeVar. Foot, <laughs> football players were my first heroes. It started with my dad, and I wanted nothing more than to play quarterback like him. Uh, and later on, some of my sort of pinch yourself moments later in my career were playing against other heroes. In 2013, as a professional, uh, we were preparing for the Broncos to come to Indianapolis. And you'd think I'd be overwhelmed. Peyton Manning's coming back to Indy for the first time. But, but no offense to Peyton. And pa pass that along, please, Archie. Holy shit, I'm playing against Champ Bailey. Oh, do not throw an interception to Champ Bailey. Please don't throw an interception to Champ Bailey. It was a pinch me moment, that, that was for sure. And I, as I talk about heroes, I, I know I can speak for all of these men and that we had heroes and role models that sparked a passion or made us believe in the impossible. And I do want to remind everybody out there that is still playing or coaching that there's a 12-year-old boy or a 12-year-old girl that's watching you and they're, they're really watching you. And please consider what you want that kid to see. And I love the role models on the back of the dais on each side with the, with the, with the Campbell Award. You guys mean a lot. And also, if you're a young man or young woman searching for, for inspiration, look, up, look these men up. Look some of their stories up. I learned today, Mo Gardner, and I've got to talk to this about you. Mo is a terrifying defensive tackle. I would, I would you know, stay away from each other with like a 10-foot pole. Uh, he's a librarian now. How awesome is that? <laughs> you kidding? A lot of inspiration. And coaches, Coach Luckhart, I think we're related many, many trees away, the Lux and the Luckharts. 
Now, late Coach Murphy, Coach Pinkle, congratulations. You, coaches, you shape and craft so much of our experiences as football players at every level, at every level from the first moment we walked out there on Pop Warner. You fill so many roles for so many people. Your impact is immeasurable. And my Stanford experience was no exception. It was littered with exceptional coaches and a massive, massive thank you to them, starting with Coach Harbaugh, who was the first head coach, and Coach Shaw, who's here tonight. Turles, Pep, Bloom, Pony, Giro, Moorhead, the list goes on and on and on. You helped shape an amazing experience for an 18-year-old when they stepped on campus. I, I'll, I'll forever be indebted to you guys. And no football experience exists in a vacuum, in a silo, and I'm grateful for those that, that work graciously behind the scenes to make college football run. I know at Stanford, when I first got there, that included Bob Bowlesby, so congratulations to you again. Matt Doyle, Bernard, guys like Gary and Claude. You know the rest of the crew, you know who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And teammates, teammates, there's a table of my offensive classmates, graduating class 2012 fellas, and Tavita, another teammate. They, they are the essence of why I loved football, why I still love football. We worked hard, we played hard. We were at Stanford, so we studied hard. Believe it or not, we partied hard. And they continue to be the best friends in my life and heroes. And instead of talking about football or problem sets, we're talking about raising kids and what the best diaper is to what you know for a three-year-old and sleep training. Uh, finally, my family, mom and dad, a simple thank you and I love you. Words can't do it justice. Marielle and Emily, Addison, who can't be here. Life's pretty awesome with siblings. You guys rock. Uh, after my first Stanford training camp in 2008, I moved into the freshman dorms, and my next door neighbor happened to be this mysterious and sharp, beautiful gymnast. Ooh -hoo. I was smitten, and I wore her down with an onslaught of all the charm and wit that I could muster, which is negligible. And fast forward to today, Nicole and I have two daughters, and I do feel quite literally the most fortunate man in the world. I love you, Nicole. And, and now, like, like, like so many else, we're, we're just fans, and we're indoctrinating our daughters and all the silliness and all the wonderful parts of football, parts of this game that we love. And it's not hard to make them Stanford good, Cal bad, bad. Sorry, Cal folks, if you're here. And with that, I do offer one more congratulations to all you men. You are heroes of mine. And a sincere thank you for a football honor of a lifetime. Thank you very much. Have a great night.